Hello and welcome to another one of our videos uh, where this is actually a follow-up to a video we did a while back on butt gripping and today we're going to be talking about shoulder gripping and this is a perfect demonstration of what that looks like so let's get into it so there's four key areas we see gripping um, take place and like I said last time we sort of looked at the hip which is also known as butt gripping which is this um, and all sorts of issues develop around the hip as a result um, there's the trunk which are, you know most people would be uh, would be abdominals um, and then there's the toes uh, which is a, a bit of a trickier one that, that this one's probably more of an un unconscious one for most people these three here are more of a conscious one so today we're going to look at the shoulders but just understand gripping uh, is when you're sort of over overdoing something so when you're really uh, trying to create a constant tension to an area all the time and instead of making it stronger it actually has the reverse effect and creates a loss of centration which basically means trying to keep a joint within its structure like housed within it in the way it's designed so you end up losing stability from constantly gripping it in an attempt to create it so too much of a good thing more or less so firstly what is shoulder gripping so um, this is uh, usually comes about more from the person who's educated and what I mean by that person is probably had a bit of gym experience or under has an awareness of posture and sort of knows maybe some of the muscles like rhomboids and mid traps and, um, and knows what retraction means things like that um, and so they, they're basically trying to improve their posture knowing that good posture is is a great way to prevent injury but when they uh, apply this sort of strategy of of really chronically retracting the shoulders they develop a, 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 a bigger problem than the one they were probably trying to solve so um, it, it really disrupts timing and uh, of, of in particular pulling and pushing movements um, you know and, and we see this a lot in the say the seated row and even in the deadlifts which we'll touch on again in shortly but um, you definitely is an element of retraction but you don't want to be chronically overusing it and we see this a lot in Pilates and things like that where they're sort of trying to always pull your shoulders back pull your shoulders back it's the worst thing you sort of tell someone all right so which leads to this so the the chronic you know the the old saying is probably the worst instruction that's the better instruction is to say stand tall because what happens is when you're always chronically pulling it back you will develop a loss of centration remember we spoke at the start and this will lead to shoulder impingement rotator cuff tears labral tears um, because the the ball cannot sit in the socket in the way it's designed because you're overusing a certain um, element of the, the the muscles and inhibiting other ones so the, the timing of how the joint will move will now be completely disrupted and now it's just a matter of time so the better cue is just to stand tall if you want to look like this posture so stand tall but don't pull your shoulders back it's the worst thing you can do all right so what's what ha happens when you do this so firstly it forces the joints of your spine together and, and this can potentially lead to a mid back or low, or low low back ache even but usually it's more of that thoracic problem and and it will start to give you problems when you're sitting for or standing for a period of long time um, and it definitely will give you neck pain that, that's one thing that I always see with people with neck pain they, they definitely have a lot of this shoulder gripping going on um, sometimes it's conscious other times it's a reaction to something um, the next thing it's going to do is limit the ability of your spinal joints to bend forward and be able to lengthen your, your anterior muscles with being through the front of your trunk being your abdominals and making them less able to support you and the third thing which is the biggest problem we see is a loss of upward rotation of the scapula which is a huge problem for shoulders so you're this one probably going to give you a bit of neck pain but you're also going to get shoulder pain which would also lead to neck pain all right so there's three big problems from doing that all the time so this is where it can get a bit <laughs> like as I did say before we do need some retraction we just don't need too much 
All right, so retraction is a normal part of biomechanics during the pulling phase and also in the easier eccentric phase of pushing movements. Uh, for example, when you're lowering yourself in a push-up, your shoulder blades will start to come together. Your scapula will retract together, and that's normal. It's just that when you're pushing up out of the push-up, you would want to see them be able to rotate apart um, and not stay in retraction, which is often what I see with the wing scapula, which is down here. And that's where these muscles here are just so working so hard, it's inhibiting other muscles, which now are creating a huge problem for how the timing of the, the scapula, which is very important to the health of the shoulder. So as you can see, if you want to have a posture like this, start retracting your shoulders all the time. So um, just understand that the biggest problem is it disrupts the timing. All right? I don't know how it... I can't overemphasize that because this is the biggest problem with the shoulder things is it's a timing problem, and you can't and, the, and and this is where you see a lot of people will use retraction to create, <laughs> heal their shoulder, and it's actually going to create more problems. So, um, and the wing scapula person doesn't necessarily have a shoulder, but definitely has a problem with weakness, and this person will have will always have neck problems. They'll have trigger points all the time, all the way through your up around supraspinatus, the, the levator scap especially, um, and de obviously deep within here. That this person will always be sort of looking for massages for neck pain. Uh, and it's because of the poor timing and poor positioning of, and they're definitely a shoulder gripper. All right, so thoracic rigidity, so the stiff thoracic region we're sort of talking about, this would be an example of stiffness through thoracic and you know, and this person just can't lift their arms above their head. So this this is where the overhead movements becomes a real problem. This this person needs a great degree of mobility to, to be able to get back into this region because it's it's got none because it's gripping all the time. So you know, as we've said mentioned before, will result in huge problems for the neck as well as the shoulder, as basically the, they've lost their their mobility here, they're now going to find it at the shoulder. So the shoulder is going to sacrifice its stability in order to make up for what it can't do, what it can't do there. So as it can't get here, it's going to smash through things in order to find it or even the lower back. So, uh, and as you can see here, as the rib cage fails to extend, the humerus will smash into the acromion. here. This is the classic case of impingements and rotator cuff tears. All right, so. So why is retraction advised if we sort of know that it's bad? Well, most of the time it's advised by therapists and people to heal an injured shoulder and you know, we typically see external rotation and the side lying one. Um, and the belief here is that the stronger upper back muscles and external rotators will provide better structure and stability of the shoulder. But um, what really happens is more dysfunction because it's a very simplistic way of looking at how the the shoulder actually works. It's the rotators cuffs. This is only one of their functions. They're, they're they're involved in the pushing and pulling things, but not in terms of like how this is shown here. Um, so it's it's sort of applying a biomechanical, like anatomy, uh, method to the muscles, but not in actually the way that they're actually moving, and that's the problem. So, um, so the three carry factors for the stability are, um, and, and we've spoke about this many videos before, and have a look in the link in the description on this video, because there'll be stuff here that it goes into more depth. So the thoracic extension and rotational mobility is very important, and gripping inhibits this. The scapular function, so the posterior tilt and then the upward rotation. These three things are critical elements for shoulder stability, and you won't achieve you won't improve any of them by doing retraction um, it's actually protraction that usually is the corrector and that is seen in the pushing patterns and it's the pushing patterns that usually bring on the pain but as we see with bulging discs that deadlift brings on the pain on bending but it's learning to bend and do the deadlift correctly that gas actually ends up getting rid of it forever so um, understanding how to to create good timing and function of the scapula within pushing patterns, especially push-ups to begin with, and then say cable movements is is excellent way to, to get rid of it, and it's an excellent way to um, correct wing scapulas. So um, the serratus anterior is heavily used in both of these, and this plays a big function in, in getting that rib cage in perfect position and housing that humeral head within the socket there. All right, so. 
Um, the push to pull to push ratio. This is another thing where we see personal trainers, the educated person taught to do three pulling exercise to one. I was told this many times and many postural corrective courses and all things with the injury rehabilitation for a long time. And this is exactly what I did. And I ended up creating a shoulder impingement myself and doing that uh, to my own body as well as to probably to other people. So now that I know better, I just ignore this. I sometimes might have three pushing to one pulling. Um, sometimes it's even, it just depends on the person. Um, but it really comes down to timing and understanding, like say for a wing scapular person, I definitely might be using more pushing than pulling. And I'll be more wary of over retracting through those with the heavy, um, say cable seated rows. I'll probably prefer one arm things instead. All right, so um, back muscles are important, but so are pushing ones. You, you just need to have a good balance. So technique is everything. So the pulling exercises when they perform poorly or even too often will reinforce the, the retraction and, and the more downward rotated and also the thoracic rigidity. So the the altered mod, motor control cannot be improved by strengthening more retraction or just using more of them. You really need to learn how to release the stiffness through the thoracic area and then how to make it move like it's designed to move. So example, this would be uh, one of the ways that we might release the the rigidity through the thoracic, then developing pushing pattern in a push up in a horizontal position, and then learning how to get scapular timing with upward rotation with arms overhead. So we're sort of developing three things um, that are learning how to use the re retractors when they're needed to be retracted, but also learning how to, to not use them when they're not meant to be working. All right, so there's three examples of how we might sort of overcome that um, and develop the better timing. The trigger points, so as we mentioned before, the trigger points are a real common th problem when someone's shoulder gripping. So someone watching this video is probably watching this because they've got problems in their rhomboids and middle traps and trigger points in their neck. Um, basically the trigger points will develop from just overuse and the rhomboids and middle trap, they'll be just going chronic and they're going to really inhibit the serratus anterior and the other guys that you need um, that will... Um, provide better st structure and centration of your joints. So um, this basically, understand, it just prevents the scapula from achieving the upward rotation. And, and they're just gonna, and now that's when you'll have difficult turning your head. So, you know, um, yeah, very, very, very common for shoulder grip, for shoulder grippers to do this. Um, gym exercises that cause it, um, as we see, like tech, as we mentioned, techniques, everything, but over squeezing the scapula together on deadlifts, I, I don't mind having some of the lats turned on, but I don't want to squeeze my shoulders together too hard. Definitely need a lot of stiffness on the deadlifts, but if you're overdoing deadlifts and farmer's walks, you can definitely develop shoulder gripping from doing too much of it. You really want to counter it with a lot of pushing stuff. Um, you know, and a lot of single arm things. If you're going to do a lot of heavy lifting, have a week where you do a lot of singles, where you get the thoracic to release the rigidity that you've just needed on this lift. So great lifts, but if they're overdone, you can create problems. Squeezing the scapula and chin-ups, that's another bad one. Uh, it really ruins the timing and lat pull-down. Um, this is a huge one. So power lifters, you see what they're told to do this, and, you know, and, and what may protect the joint in the short term will ruin it in the long term so this is really bad it's just not how the shoulders meant to function um, doing too many rowing exercises as we said before um, also pulling the elbows in too close on the rowing exercises so as we saw that retraction uh, picture at the start that that's a real big problem when someone does that um, so as we mentioned before keep things well balanced so have the balance between pulling and pushing and you know if you've got gripping have some mobility work so if i'm doing heaps of deadlifts i'm going to do heaps of single arm things and, de and definitely turkish get-ups where i'm where it's demanding mobility for me i have to sort of have good stiffness through other areas but not really cranking down through here all right so um exercise to count the shoulder gripping and the and the poor scapular function yoga push-ups are great the wall slides as we mentioned before they're, they're an excellent one for serratus both of these great for serratus anterior and, and scapular timing um, other great strength exercise wood chops where we get a lot of thoracic movement um, moving in different angles as well so going high to low low to high single arm cable stuff are excellent um, and thoracic mobility drills that you could use to create the rotation and loss of that and just getting better timing throughout everything, right? So 
Um, so if you're shoulder gripper, you need to change your habits. You need to stop doing the chronic gripping all the time. You need to stop uh, aggressively pulling your shoulders together when you're exercise. Sure, your rowing technique does not allow the elbows to come too close to the body. Again, look in the links in the description uh, underneath for the links because there's um, better to, um, more information about this sort of stuff. Uh, counter your back work and deadlifts with push-ups and wall slides and, cute, and then always include some unilateral or single arm stuff. Beware of training too heavy with too many bilateral loaded stuff. So it's mean like doing too many two arm bent over rows, too many chin ups, too many um, just two arm stuff that's really heavy for too long. That'll create problems for you as well. And make sure you mobilize the thoracic region with extension and rotation. Do these things you can prevent, you can even reverse the shoulder gripping, but it may take a bit of time depending on how much um, problems you have. All right, so if you have more questions or you want to know more about how we execute this for shoulder pain, um, I de definitely recommend to get our report that goes through step by step how to assess yourself and then go through a, a process of correcting the, the dysfunction that you may have that was specific to you and it's all included in this report. So go to our website to, to get a copy of that or have a look in the description below because I've got a link for it there. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed that video and we'll see you on our next one.